Hello, I'm Ian Andrew from Incentive Software. In this short video, we'll take you through some of the techniques involved in creating your own Freescape environment. 3D Construction Kit contains all the commands you need to create your own worlds, worlds which you can explore at will, providing you don't walk into too many trees. As with any set of tools, it helps to have an idea of how to use them before you start. We'll be introducing some of the basic techniques, and you'll find further details in the manual. We'll also mention any major differences between versions of the program. This is particularly relevant if you have an 8-bit machine, such as a Sinclair Spectrum, Commodore 64, or Amstrad CPC. However, most of the techniques are the same on all versions, so normally we'll just show the Commodore Amiga. Now we've cleared the cliffs, let's start with a plain landscape. We communicate with the program using a cursor. On 8-bit versions, we use a joystick or the keyboard. For 16-bit machines, we control it with the mouse. At the top of the screen is a menu bar which contains all the major functions. To make a selection, just move the cursor over the menu until the correct command is highlighted, then press the joystick button or click with the mouse. The middle of the screen is the window onto our Freescape world. At the moment, there's just ground and sky. Directly below this is a status bar. Its figures tell us exactly where we are in our environment. Next come two sets of icons. Those on the left control our viewpoint and whether we walk or fly through our landscape. The ones on the right move us around the environment and change our eye level so that we can look up or down. At the bottom of the screen, the major commands are duplicated from the menu bar. If we want a full screen view of our world, we just click on the test button and the control panel vanishes completely. Well, that's not very interesting at the moment, so let's start creating. The basic building block is a cube, so let's see what we can do with it. To place a cube in the landscape, we click on the Create button at the bottom of the screen. This leads to another menu containing all the shapes which are available, our building blocks. Cube is at the top right-hand corner. When it first appears, the cube is hovering in mid-air, as we can see if we walk around it using the movement control buttons. On 8-bit machines, objects first appear on the ground. Clicking on the edit button, then selecting the relevant item from the menu, lets us move it around. As a shortcut, 16-bit owners can click on the object itself rather than using the menu. Either way, the edit control panel appears at the bottom of the screen. This contains buttons which will move an object, stretch it, shrink it, or turn it through 90 degrees. If you make a mistake, don't worry, there's an undo button at the far right of the panel. Using these controls, we can shrink the cube until it's only the size of a matchbox. Then stretch it until it becomes a flagpole. Even though it's grown out of the top of the screen, we can look up with the view button to see that it's all there. But for our simple building, we need a flat wall. We could go through all those stages again to create a second wall, but a more convenient and accurate technique is to use the copy function. On 16-bit, we're given the option of where our new section will appear in relation to the original. The only restriction is that it can't appear inside another object. We place it to the right, 
then use the edit commands to move it to one side to form an alleyway. On 8-bit, selections have to be made from the menu and the new object appears in a set position, but apart from that, the process is essentially the same. Now we create a third section of wall above the first. Edit it like this and then use the turn and move commands to maneuver it into place. We stretch it until it covers the alleyway to form a tunnel. Now we have a tunnel. Now let's add some color. Coloring is achieved in a different manner in virtually all versions of 3D construction kit, but these are the basic techniques. As we can only paint one side of an object at a time, the first step is to select which one. We start with the left wall and this takes us to our palette. On the Amiga we just click on any of the available colors. Immediately our selection is surrounded by a flashing box and a larger color sample appears to the far right of the palette. On the Amiga and ST we can simply click on the wall. Instead of constantly having to move around to paint each side of the cube, 3D Construction Kit provides a shortcut. Each section of this panel represents one face of the selected cuboid. We can click on this rather than the object itself. And this is the technique used by 8-bit versions and on the PC. To cut down on processing time and speed up the program's operation, it's as well to leave faces which will never be seen, such as the bottoms of walls, unpainted. You can also use this invisible paint as a special effect to create a force field, for example. If you forget what color you've used, simply click on the section of wall and the correct tone will be selected on the palette. On an 8-bit micro, such as the Spectrum, with its two-color world, the program uses various shades. Though we have to type in a number from the menu, the technique remains the same. On 16-bit versions, there are two handy tools on the left of the control panel to help isolate